what are macros? It's short for the word macronutrients. I hear people th throw around the word macros and micros. They're completely different. Um, macro is short for macronutrient. Micro is short for micronutrients and micronutrients are vitamins and minerals so like potassium vitamin c and iron and zinc and selenium and vitamin a e if i didn't say one of those already those are micro the itty bitty um components that are also in food they're in soil they're in water you guys know that there are um electrolytes sodium potassium salt those things are in water they're in foods they're in everything but macros that we're talking about today are the big portions of our food and so macro does mean larger subunit and your three macros are going to be your proteins your carbs and your fats and they are all in the foods that we eat so we consider those like the big three and what they are they are large molecules that make up a big portion of the food that we eat every single day and so when you guys are like looking at a nutrition label and I'll be using some cinnamon graham crackers one of my favorite macros um, because they're low in fat and they're so stinking cheap and my kids can eat them and I, I'll use these to help hit my carbs so if I'm under, I'll use these um, or I'll fill up on more veggies. Um, but when you look at a nutrition label, there are protein, carbs, and fats. And when you look at the calories on there, these protein, carbs, and fats add up to the calories on the actual label. So if you've ever flipped over a label to just check out the food or you've tracked your food in my fitness pal just because you want to see what you're eating you want to be accountable or you want to see your calories um, a lot of people don't know it but they're actually tracking macros too so tracking macros means that you're tracking calories tracking calories means that you're tracking macros tracking weight watchers points when you put those things in um, like your weight watchers calculator even though like the goal of it is trying to hit those points you're tracking calories and you're tracking macros the huge difference between tracking macros and weight watchers points if you're someone and if you have let me know if you've done weight watchers i've done it five times <laughs> but if you are someone who's done weight watchers you're actually doing a more complicated form of macro tracking and here's why so like I said, calories are macros, macros are calories. When you look on the label, you see calories and you see protein, carbs, and fats. You don't see Weight Watchers points. So Weight Watchers actually takes the calories and the macros and the fiber and gives you a point system or a point assignment for the actual um, macro. So it's almost like, remember when we were like in grade school and you would look at a map and it was like a map of like, uh, let's say we zoomed in on like the city of Denver. You would see a solid line and that would outline like the outline of the state. And so you would look at the legend and the legend was like a black solid line. But like where there were like trails in the mountains for walking and hiking, remember the trails were like dot, 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 dot or um, you know the dashes I mean and so you would look on the the legend and it would say the dashes equal the trail and then maybe the dots were something else and then a color was like blue might have been a body of water so maybe like a river or a lake in Denver and then maybe you saw like triangles on the map you guys remember like those little like peaks then you look at the legend and the peak would say oh that's a mountain so it's basically like that for weight watchers points so like three points would actually equal this amount of protein carbs fats calories fiber so protein or sorry calories and macros are basically each other they're the inverse when you know one you can pretty much find the other but when you're counting weight watchers points they assign a symbol or a number for what you're actually looking at or think about when you color by number you know three is a yellow blue is a um a five a, you know seven is a green and you know what to pick but you're like decoding macros 
they're the actual the actual true value of what like the label is going to say on the back of a box so tracking calories is looking at how many total um, calories that you're consuming and I'll go over some terminology too if you guys didn't see the post that I did the other day um, but tracking macros means that you're setting a customized target for protein carbs and fats so like the very first goal is calculating and um, calculating or coming up with a calorie goal logging all your foods and just looking at the calories how do they add up did i hit 1600 1500 1800 2100 tracking macros means that target of calories is much more exact and it's more customized like you're taking it to um the next level so think about a car let's say like um let's say you want to buy a bmw um there's like the basic car it's like the standard factory car and that car may have certain things on it that comes and it's like the cheapest price and it's twenty five thousand. that's counting calories it's the standard car but you want to upgrade sometimes and get like the leather seats um does it drive in like the sport and the comfort um do you want to have heated seats a sunroof um, automatic car start, maybe it's like more upgraded wheels. I don't even know all the stuff with wheels, so I'm not even gonna play with you guys like I know what that means. Um, whatever's ever on my car is whatever my husband picked because I don't really know, I just know it looks good. Um, so I wanna act like I know, but maybe the BMW standard is 25K, but the upgraded version, which is going to be, um, you know, a more premium vehicle, it's, it may ride better, it looks better, you feel better, you're like, man, this is a nice car. Maybe that next upgraded version starts at like $33,000. So when you go from calorie tracking to macro tracking, you're kind of going from that basic standard package to like this premium package, and you're getting better results because counting calories alone is going to help you focus on weight loss and I'll talk about energy balance here in a second but calories controls your weight eating more than you need less than you need exactly what you need that controls the weight on the scale but adding the macro factor and you're looking at both calories and macros because to calculate your macros you've got to have a calorie goal first and primarily and that's what we um, teach in macro makeover we always go with um, we, we calculate your BMR total daily energy expenditure then your calories and then your protein and then your carbs and then your fats and I'll give you some of those definitions too um, but when you go from calories alone that focuses on what your weight is and where you want the weight to go that's one thing but when you do the premium upgrade and you're looking at calories and macros you're actually um, you're actually going to be going from a state of only weight loss or weight control only but the calorie and the macro counting will help with fat loss and i did a post on instagram like a couple posts back so if you guys aren't on instagram e fit chick i'm doing posts every single day darn near for the rest of the month like this whole month of august is all macro stuff and so was july um but macros are going to help you change your body composition and get leaner drop your body fat percentage and lose weight counting calories alone will actually help you with your weight macros is weight and your body fat composition um so on the uh, sunday i did a post about macro terminology so calories are basically the amount of energy um, you need to be able to um, raise your body temperature. It's also the amount of energy you need to be able to complete different like tasks. You need the fuel. And it's also um, the energy that physically comes in the food form. And so calories are the addition of protein, carbs, and fats. And protein is going to be the macro that is important for like your muscle building, um, DNA repair, also for biochemical 
um, biochemical and biomechanical actions. It helps to keep you full. It raises your metabolism. Um, it also helps you to get leaner, drop your body fat percentage, and it can increase your basal metabolic rate. So protein does not make you fat. It raises your um, metabolism. It's found in fish. It's found in beans. It's found in meat, um, dairy, plant-based uh, plant based sources like Beyond Meat, Impossible Meat, Seitan, um, Tofu, um, Edamame, Soybeans, all of those things. Carb, the next macro, is the source of energy that our body seeks. So protein is really for building repair and metabolism. Carbohydrates are really for energy. So when we eat a meal that's got protein, carbs, and fats, our body loves, loves, loves the carbs for energy. And so it's also responsible for raising our metabolism and keeping our thyroid healthy. People who go on a very low carb diet or have an extended period of extremely low carbs um, that are hoping like to lose weight and there are sometimes people that go, oh, my metabolism is slow. When you cut your carbs out and you're not eating what you need every day, you're actually slowing your metabolism down. Thought your thyroid actually needs carbs to fuel it. That's why people go low carb for a couple of weeks and like the weight loss stops. But carbs are fruits and vegetables. So many people think that carbohydrates are not fruits and veggies. So if you've ever been like on a smoothie diet um, or you're like doing the Daniels fast, you're eating all the carbs. You're eating a high, high, high carb diet. They're, those are just complex carbs. So complex carbs are going to be like brown rice, quinoa, whole grains, oatmeal. And it's also going to be in sweet potatoes too, and also fruits and vegetables. Um, potatoes are also carbs. Those are white, red, and sweet potatoes. They're all good for you. Um, this is predominantly carbs, rice, everything. All of those are carbs. Um, and fats are the last macro, and it's extremely important for hormone regulation. So there's two macros that our body uses for energy. The first one and its first choice are going to be carbohydrates. The second choice is going to be fats. Um, so if you eat a meal with carbs and fats, your body will use the carbs first for energy, energy and then it's going to use the fats. Um, I see a lot of people going on low carb and low fat diets. That is bad for your weight loss hormones and your thyroid. So that's why... I've made it my mission for the last two years to help women calculate their own macros accurately because they're actually damaging their thyroid um, more by going really, really low in carbs and fats. But the fats are needed um, for um, the production of lipids, which are um, fats in your body that are needed for all types of, of hormone production. It also reduces your risk of, hardy, of cardiovascular disease. Um, but your fats are responsible for creating a lot of the weight loss hormones that you need. And so some of those hormones are going to be leptin. It's going to be T3. It's going to be T4. Um, it's also responsible for the right levels of estrogen and progesterone. And these are important for like not being too high or too low and can help improve conditions like, um, um, fibroids, um, cysts, and endometriosis, early menopause, perimenopause, just menopause, period. Um, but fats can be found mostly in like your oils, your butter, butters, your nuts, your seeds, um, egg yolks, all of those things. So when it comes to how do these macros actually turn into calories, um, I'm going to type something in the chat so you guys can actually see the numbers. So to be able to convert um, macros into calories and calories into macros, it's really, really important, really, really important to note um, that macros are converted to calories from grams. And each macronutrient has a certain number of calories. And this is something you just have to memorize. So one gram of protein contains four calories. 
one gram of carbohydrates contains four calories as well. And fats are calorically dense. That's why when you calculate your own macros, they're so much lower. Um, but one gram of fat contains nine calories. So let's look at this box here. I got to You think backwards. So the fat on here is 3.5, the carbs are 24, and the protein is 2 grams. So fat is the most calorically dense. So to figure out how many calories are fat, it's the 3.5 times 9. And so that's 31.5 calories. 31.5, we'll put that in there. And then carbohydrates are 24. It's four grams, four calories per gram. So 24 times four is going to be 96 calories. And then there's only two grams of protein. So can you guys see this is mostly a carb? It's higher in carbs. So every gram of protein is four calories. So two times four is eight. Whoops. I know this is a little bit delayed. So 96 plus 8 plus 31.5, it really comes to 135.5. I'm going to go back and look at these questions. But the FDA allows rounding up to 10%. So again, I'm backwards. <laughs> so 135.5 was rounded down to 130. And then the, the serving size is two full cracker sheets or about 31 grams as you weigh on your food scale. So the difference of tracking macros and tracking calories is when this goes into my fitness pal, um, I'm going to be looking at the calories, but I'm going to look at how the macros are adding up um, on the nutrients and nutrients screen for the day. So I calculate my own macros by setting my calories, turning the calories into my macro goals, and then I program that in my fitness pal as my goal, and then I shoot to get to um, that goal every single day. So um, just so you know, just like this food, there are a lot of foods that are multiple macros. So some are just protein, some are protein and carbs, some are fat and carbs, some are fat and protein, and some are carbs and protein or carbs and fat. All of the different scenarios. So things aren't just one thing. Meat are going to be mostly protein unless it's a fatty steak and it's going to be protein and fat. Um, cookies are mostly carbs and fats. So that would kind of be like the graham crackers, except this has less fat than Oreos. Peanut butter is mostly fat. It's got some protein. It's got some carbs. Um, a strawberry Greek yogurt is mostly protein and carbs. Beans are mostly carbs and protein. A lot of people think that beans are mostly a protein. Um, beans have about 7 grams of protein and 14 grams of carbs, so there's actually more. Um, and then I'll put in the chat box what the ranges um, are about. And I know you guys are going to see this and go, these ranges are super high. That's why we actually uh, teach people how to calculate them. So let me put this in here so you guys can see it. So, and I know it's like a little delayed. Come on, Facebook. There we go. And here's another one. And the ranges are wide because they need to be customized. Um, so, you know, most women are going to need um, between 100 and 300, and gram, 300 grams of carbs per day. Um, most women and men are going to need between 40 to 85 grams of fat per day. Um, and then for protein, most women are going to need between 100 
to 185 grams of protein per day, but it's actually lower if you're plant-based because you have to have room to get the carbs and the fats in because a lot of plant-based protein sources like beans, like I explained, they're carbs and they're going to be protein. So I know these ranges are wide. Um, these definitely are not numbers that I'm just making up, but these are... Um, numbers from the um, American Society of Dietitians. And so these numbers have been based off of research and studies that have been done over the past 50 years plus. But what I do in Macro Makeover is take that plus additional research studies um, by those who are focusing on macro-based nutrition and all of the data that I have from us coaching clients in G Transformation Academy since 2014. And I've created my own formula so that you guys can actually get numbers that are way more dialed in than this. Um, but that is like the basic introduction to macros, what they are, where the numbers come from, what they are capable of with the different processes in the body, how you're adding them up on a nutrition label, how they are more exact or the premium version of calorie counting, and how they can help with your weight loss and also metabolism and fat loss. Let me see if there's any questions in here. <laughs> Some of these are funny. Yeah, I didn't like Weight Watchers because they have default numbers. So just like my Fitness Pal, when you calculate your calories in there, it'll default to like 1,200, 1,300, 1,400. I put my macros, or sorry, my body weight and things in there, it always tells me 1,200. I am not eating 1,200 calories and I'm in a fat loss state. Weight Watchers, I was trying to always memorize the numbers. I probably have one of their books on my shelf still. Um, but I was memorizing the numbers and I learned nothing about nutrition. I didn't learn how to read a nutrition label when I was 21 doing Weight Watchers. I just knew, up, oh, that's free. Up, oh, that's four points. Up, oh, these little cakes are three points. But free is not free. Um, eating on a Weight Watchers program and those points say like chicken and egg whites are free. If you have those three times a day, that, that might be 350, 400, 200 calories you don't account for. Multiply that by seven days a week. And then that ends up being something like 2,000 calories every single week that you're just eating that is not helping you move towards your goal um, of weight loss. So, yes, I love the cinnamon crackers. Um, I'm a Weight Watchers Lifetime member that fell from grace. <laughs> That is hilarious. Um, I think like half of women have done Weight Watchers. It's a great starting point to having a healthy lifestyle. Um, and I'll never downplay that because it taught me a lot. And it got me in the mode of thinking what's healthy, what's better. But when it came to exactness and making sure my metabolism was like running like a well-oiled machine, it wasn't the move for me. Um, so cool. Good info. Yep. Protein, protein, protein for the win. Um, under eating slows down your metabolism too. And that means you have to slowly reverse your calories up or do that reverse diet. Keto sucks because yes, people typically gain weight back quicker because your body is trying to repair itself from the loss of carbohydrates that are typically needed to have everything running in tip top shape. Carbs and fats, energy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, should someone with hormone imbalances have a higher fat diet or macros? It depends on the hormonal imbalance. Um, but typically, if I have someone um, that has like PCOS or is going through menopause, um, we will typically make their fat macros um, anywhere like 2 to 5% higher than what we would have originally set and then calculate those down to the gram. Um, you can get more iron from um, meat choices and spinach and things like that. Um, I don't know where the PMS came in, so I don't know what that question is. Um, free is not free. I can't even... That was like the mic drop. I can't say anything else. Free is not free. <laughs> 
Um, I've done keto, lazy keto. Yeah, if you do lazy keto and you're not tracking the macros or calories, then you might be overeating or under eating. Um, but in Macro Makeover, we teach how to reverse out of keto. 20% of our clients come to us to get out of keto. So we reverse their macros and get them to like a normal profile. So if you guys have any other macro questions, leave them below. Um, but definitely go to www.gtransformationacademy.com. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page. And then there you'll be able to grab um, the How to Track Macros Guide, which talks about my fitness pal, how to put things in, how to log it. Um, if you're like, well, let me just see what I'm eating. And then I'm going to get my mind around that. And then, you know, start exploring more with like the macro side.